bit far away, okay? A bit closer. Is that better? Is that better or not really? Yes? Up on the other side of the Yeah, that's good. That's good? Thanks, Caroline. Yeah? Well, good morning everybody and welcome. Uh, most of you who are here already know me and know that, in fact, apart from being called Denise, I'm also the Sunday school teacher. My job is usually upstairs with the children. I've been promoted or demoted, this is down here, I don't know, <laughs> to lead today's service as John and Debbie, our chaplains, are away for a break. Next Sunday they'll be back again. So, you have been here today. We're going to begin the service by wishing one another a happy new year. <laughs> happy new year, happy 2022 to everybody. And as we're in Spain, we've got people from around the world here, from America, from Germany, <laughs> from Scotland, and over here from Australia. Um, some of us are from England, there's still a few of us. <laughs> a few of us are from England too. But anyway, at some point throughout this 24 hours, we'll be celebrating the new year. We're going to begin our celebration today. Service of the Word, we're going to begin with a hymn which, if you've got a booklet, it's number five, and Alain and Silas will put it on the screen Angels from the Realms of Glory. So if you're able to stand, we're going to sing. Happy New Year to everybody. Our chat 
Prince John and Debbie are away in France, celebrating the new year, and they'll be back next week. They'll be glad to be. <laughs> back in 2022, in the summer, it was the first occasion I had to leave the service, the first, and I thought perhaps the last, but no, here I am again. Uh, I pray that the words of my lips and the contemplation of my heart will be pleasing unto you, O Lord. So, many of you, I'm glad to see, had a, a good night last night. Uh, you're here this morning, which is good. Congratulations. <laughs> and I wonder if you've thought about how you are going to spend this 2023. Have you thought what you're going to be doing differently? Okay. So, with the new year, new beginnings, a time to start all over again. And that's what Christ has to offer when you accept Him as your Saviour, but not just one day a year. Every day is a new beginning, a new opportunity to know and love Jesus just as he knows you and loves you. We're going to begin with our first reading, which will be antiphonally, which is Psalm 143. It will be up here on the, on the screen, the projector, and it's also in your Bible, on page 633. Psalm 143, our first verse, sorry, 48, sorry, my writing. Page 633, 148 Psalm, and we'll read, I read the first verse, and you read the second, and so on. And at the end of it, we'll be saying, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights above. Praise George's prayer. 
song of celebration. His name is Wonderful, which is number seven in the book. It's also a
verses 13 to 23. Hear the gospel according to St. Matthew. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up and took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, Out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod realised he'd been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity, who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had learnt from the Magi. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. So he got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard what Archelaus was, that Archelaus was written in Judea, the place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee. And he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets that he will be called a Nazarene. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Just a quick mention here my dear friend Brenda, who um, was the only person left standing in the summer when I read the gospel, because I wasn't aware that you were supposed to stay standing and John had put it on my instructions. So everybody sat down except Brenda. Poor Brenda, unfortunately, is not well herself today. And also her son, whose wife is expecting their first child. How many weeks now? 33. 33 weeks. Has got appendicitis, so she's in hospital. So please remember her in your prayers today. So, the exciting part of my sermon. Now, the last time I led the service, there were four readings, in fact, and today there's only been three, which make my life a little easier. And as I read to them, the one that spoke to me, which was the first one, you didn't come late, you heard it, as we're in St. George's, we often, the Spanish custom is to come later. So, the word that came out constantly in that first psalm was, Will we wake? <laughs> I know it's early. Praise, praising. And we were told to praise everyone, sorry, everyone and everything were told to praise our Lord. Michael, can you hear me? Yeah, thank you. Just checking. So, in our First Testament, it was several times the word praise or praising was mentioned. In the second reading, the word praise is mentioned, but it's Jesus, Jesus saying the praises of the people who are his brothers and sisters. And in the third reading, praising wasn't mentioned, but I'm sure Joseph, first when he received the news to go and flee from Herod, who was killing off all the little children, I'm sure he praised God for being saved. And when he heard that he could come back to safety, I'm sure he praised God again. Now, looking up the word praise, it comes from a Latin word, those of you who are scholars, <laughs> which I'm not, uh, it comes from a Latin word which means value or price. Thus, to give praise to God is to proclaim his merit or worth. And many terms are used in the Bible to express 
this, including glory, blessing, thanksgiving, and hallelujah. The last, the last name being a transliteration of the Hebrew word for praise the Lord. So let's think about praises and praising. When was the last time that someone praised you? Anybody? Perhaps it was that wonderful Christmas dinner that you cooked. Yes, Louise? Birthday, maybe. Maybe. You praised, you thanked God, but you praised for that. Maybe somebody praised you for a new outfit. Maybe somebody praised you for a new haircut. Maybe somebody praised you for a birthday gift. Or maybe it was for being a good boy or girl. So, can you tell us if you have ever been praised? Sorry, can you tell us if there's a time when you have praised somebody else? You don't do a lot of praising. <laughs> Anybody? Indeed, the, the nine lessons were, it was a wonderful service which is online, if you, if you weren't able to come like I wasn't, I actually saw it online, so we made Sherry, who's not here this morning, celebrating in Toronto, I think, so welcome Sherry, <laughs> and the wonderful music that she chooses each week for us to sing. Anything else that you praise somebody else for? How about your children back there? Praise mommy or daddy for anything? Yes? Am I, am I not? What have you praised mommy for? Sorry? For buying you a gift. For buying you a gift? Oh, well that's worth some praise. Was, was it a big gift or a small one? A big one. Lovely. Nobody tells what it is. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so we have many, many reasons to praise others as well as receiving praise ourselves. And praise is edifying. It builds us up. It makes us feel good. And God wants us to praise. As we've just read in Psalm 148. We find out that it's a common word, in fact, in many, many of our psalms. It's in fact called the Book of Praise. Praise in page, really. <laughs> page, um, a word in Hebrew, which Jenny was here, our youth worker. She studied Hebrew, and she would know. I'm probably pronouncing it wrongly, but anyway, Yada means praise. It means give thanks or confess. Another word translated in the Old Testament is zama, which means sing praise. So we can say praise, but we can also sing praise. And the third word for praise is halal, which is the root of the word hallelujah, meaning to praise, honour, or thank. And all of them give us a giving thanks and honour to one who is worthy of praise. Now children, this is a question for you. In the Bible, who are we taught to praise? It's a difficult question I'll ask the adults, but I'll really tell me. Who do we praise? Who are we taught to praise in the Bible? Jesus. Praise Jesus. Amanda? You're going to say Jesus as well. Jesus. Praise Jesus. Okay, we are told over and over again to praise Jesus. Here in our psalm this morning, we're praising God. Who is Jesus? So, praise comes out all the time. And throughout the Testament, the New Testament, Jesus was praised by many, although, as we know, not by everybody. Paul, who met Jesus on the road to Damascus, at first, as we know, tried to uh, do everything bad he could for people who were not like him, the Jewish. But after meeting Jesus, he did everything he could to get people to praise and to worship him. 
In Philippians 2, you might think Paul goes over the top in his praise about Timothy and Epaphroditus. But Paul's not like that. When he praises or prays somebody, it was because they were really worth it. And they were his co-workers. And they were concerned for the welfare of all the other people and, of course, the interests of Jesus. A question for all of us here. Do we care about our co-workers? Do we feel they're co-workers? Do we care about those that we know and love? Do we care about those that we don't know? Jesus still tells us to love them. In Philippians 2, 5 to 11, we read, In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Jesus Christ, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. In other words, Jesus wasn't looking for praise. It just comes naturally to those of us who know and have experienced him and what he said and did. This coming week, on the 6th of January, can anybody tell me what that special day is called? The Day of the Kings. It's called the King's Day. It's one of the names for it. Yes. So, we're going to be thinking, at least the children, I don't know if the children we have here will be thinking, but definitely throughout Spain, children are thinking about the coming, not of Jesus, but of the three kings. In fact, this tradition that's celebrated throughout Spain is based on a biblical thing, which was three magi who went to visit Jesus with their very, very special gifts, which we don't have, I suppose. Some of us might be fortunate to have gold, frankincense perfume perhaps, no, hopefully not. <laughs> but they will be arriving here in Barcelona and throughout Spain to surprise us in helicopters in certain places. Very often they come into the port, and some friends of ours, they use their vintage cars to tour the kings throughout the procession, throughout their little village. So, they come to bring gifts for all the children who are good, but also those that are not. <laughs> so, even though the kings are the wise men, were rich, they worshipped and praised this child. Before them, shepherds, humble shepherds, who were in fact the first ones to know about Jesus' birth, were told by angels, went to visit and to praise the Christ child. So, let's not forget who we are praising. You might ask the question, so why should we praise Jesus? Why did he come to this earth? The Bible tells us in 1 Peter 2.21, he came to show us how to live in a way which is pleasing to God. In 2 Corinthians 1.3-5, he came to understand our struggles so that he could fully comfort us in a time of need. John 14, verse 9. He came to teach us about his Father. In Romans, he came to rescue us. And in Isaiah 41, 10, he came so that we would not fear. These are just a few reasons for our praise. So let's rejoice and, protect and praise God. Because in 1 John 4, verse 9, Nine, we read, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we may live through him. 
And I can hear one or two people here maybe saying, but I don't feel like praising anyone, including God or Jesus, or everything is going badly. How can I praise God? So, as a popular advert tells us, just do it. God's ways are not our ways. His ways are often beyond our understanding. But knowing who he is and what he has done for us, it makes it easier. Praising God, in fact, is the best medicine we can hope for. And at the end of time, all of God's people will join in eternal praise of God. In Revelation 22, verse 3, we read, No longer will anything accursed be accursed, but the throne of God and the Lamb will be in it and his servant will be worshipped. With the curse of sin removed, those who are with the Lord will forever praise the King of Kings in perfection. And it's been said that our worship of God here on earth is simply a preparation of a celebration of praise that will take place in eternity with our Lord. So let's praise Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit together by ourselves, every day, at every opportunity, starting today on this first day of the new year, 2023. Amen. Now we're going to stand if we're able to say the affirmation of our faith. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy, 
There are prayers. We think of our brothers and sisters in Ukraine and in Russia, Lord, suffering still a year on. Lord, in your mercy. We think of our friend Jordi, who is usually upstairs helping with the sound system, who's not well. We lift him to you, Lord, the perfect doctor. Lord, in your mercy. Say out loud or, or in the quiet of our hearts, people known to us personally who may be suffering in any way. We lift them to you now, Lord. Thank you. you hear all our prayers. Accept these prayers in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus, you lived on earth doing only what the Father commanded you. Let us be true to you, Lord Jesus Christ, as you were true to the Father. Father, help us, and may we be true to you, Christ. You ate with tax collectors and sinners. You cared for the leper. You were compassionate and mistreated and the alienated. Jesus, may we have your compassion towards others. Father, help us, be kind to others. You showed mankind the Father. You demonstrated the love of God to the world. You call us to be your witnesses. Father, help us. May we take the gospel to the nations. And now, if you are able, please stand. We're going to share the sign of the peace. So it was a worldwide thing. So, we like to offer each other the peace. The peace of the Lord be with you.
Не пизвуйте у Мексико. Before we had a few notices, so we'd like to 
sit. I'm putting the alphabetical order so that I remember what's what. First of all, um, to everybody that I know here already knows the Lord, and those who are watching online, maybe not. But we're offering an opportunity for people to come once more to George's study, an 11 week course of the Christian faith called the Alpha Course. Many, many, many years ago, I was taking part here at St. George's, and it's a wonderful experience to know and to walk and to find out about the Lord. Our youth worker Jenny will be doing that starting on the 22nd of January. Every Sunday, from 6 till 8 in the evening. A for Alpha, B for the kids. So, um, what's that? Is she going to get the card? Does anybody have a birthday? I know somebody does, but she's not here this morning. Tomorrow, Mummy and Daddy, would you like to call out her name? Lydia. Lydia. Lydia tomorrow will be how many? How old she now? Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Gosh, she's visiting from University in England. She's over for a few days, yes, with Claire and Phil Mum <laughs> Anybody else got a birthday celebrating? So, Joe. Um. Pam. Pam. It was your birthday. That's right. Pam, the day after, day after Christmas. Yeah. Right. So the Boxing Day or St Stephen's. Pam celebrated her birthday. 21 again. 21. Is that the French? It's not the French version. Can I tell that? It's just the last one. 21. Elderly lady. That's right. So Rob and this being the family had his birthday on the 30th, just a couple of days ago. Anybody else have birthdays? My father-in-law. Your father-in-law? Yes. When? Today. That's today? Yes. Wow, that's a special birthday, isn't it? Yeah, I won't ask ages and so on, but very special. Happy birthday to you. Anybody else? Okay. So we're going to sing Happy Birthday Dear Family, because many of our congregation from all over the world and we are a family of Christ, so... I doubt it very much, Mike. 
for those who don't know, uh, the first Sunday normally we have uh, a Zoom meeting. This has come from COVID time and we, we couldn't get anywhere and do anything. Every Sunday we used to meet and we called it coffee time, five o'clock on a Sunday afternoon. And it was then just every Sunday, but now it's just once a month. And I suppose next Sunday, the 8th of January, at five o'clock, we have people from all over the world, former former um, people that came here from Belarus, from America, from England, <laughs> that joined us as well, as well as some of us from here. Another one, Michael? Uh, uh, being deaf, I'm not sure whether you've already said it or not, but I believe next Sunday there is an early uh, communion service. You're right. Which, yes. of course, is, which we used to have every other Sunday. Yeah. This is the first time we have had an early morning service uh, since COVID, I believe. That's right. So I'm, I'm, back sure, to I'm sure uh, John uh, will, will so. welcome yeah. um, a number of people, as many people as possible, to come yes. to the early service. So that will be also once a month, the early service, and I think it's nine o'clock, isn't it? I'm not sure. I think, it, I think it's pretty early, yeah? so I don't know. <laughs> it's maybe 9.30. Oh, 9.30 maybe, yes, but I know it's not 10, because it's too close to the 11 o'clock one, which is why it's got moved originally. So things are even more coming back to normal. Right. So next Sunday, uh, early service. Um, Anything else? I think we'll know we're doing the cakes. Will that be next week as well? Next Sunday.
guide us on our way at every turn. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among us and remain with us always. We missed out a hymn, I've done it. Do we all feel like singing still? So. <laughs> Come on, let's do this. The last one is number nine. Hark the herald angels sing.